Today we're going to be talking about integral as net change. And we've already semi-talked about this. So suppose that we have a position function. Then to get our velocity function, you guys know we take the derivative of the position function. To get acceleration, we take the derivative of velocity, which is the same thing as the second derivative of position. Now suppose that we're given our velocity function. How do we move backwards to get our position function? How do we undo a derivative? We take our integral. So we're going to take the integral of our velocity function. Now there are some key concepts you need to understand. Displacement, change in position from start to end. So think about the example. I think about the example of I'm walking to and from school. So I have my house and I walk to school. I walk 0.88 miles to school every day. So I walk to school, I get to school, I teach, then I turn around and now I walk home from school. So what's my displacement at the end of the day? My displacement at the end of the day is technically zero. And displacement is going to be the integral of velocity with respect to time. Okay, final displacement. Final, and I spelled final wrong. Final displacement is your initial position plus your displacement. Okay, now total distance. The total distance is the integral of the absolute value of velocity. So it's just looking at what's the total amount of distance that I've traveled. So if you think about my example of me walking to and from school, the total amount of distance that I've traveled is 1.76 miles. Okay, I walk to and from school, that's 0.88 miles times 2. Now your final position is where you are in relation to where you end. In the example of my walking to and from school, my final position would be 0. Let's say I didn't go as far and I stopped maybe at Safeway and I slept at Safeway for the night then my final position wouldn't be zero. It would be some positive number because Safeway is on my way home. So an example now, and make sure you're writing this down. Write down number one, where we have a function for velocity. We're going to have three different parts to this. So we have our velocity function of a particle moving along the x-axis. Determine whether it's moving left, right, and stopped. So remember that's when our velocity equals zero. I'm right away going to factor out a three and this technically should be review for you guys. So now what I do is I factor so t is going to equal six and t is going to equal four. So what am I moving? left, right, or stopped, we make our literal number line. We're going from 0 to 6. Another place we're stopped is at 4. Remember, I plug in a number between 0 and 4. And when I plug in a number between 0 and 4, we are positive. So I am moving to the right when velocity is positive. So that's from 0 to 4. I'm going to plug in a number between 4 and 6. Our value is negative, so we are moving left from 4 to 6. And actually, I shouldn't have put that little equal to sign in there because when are we stopped? We're stopped when our velocity equals 0. So that's at 4 and 6 seconds. And make sure you guys are putting in 
some units. Now part B, find the particle's displacement for the given time over the interval, and we have an initial position. Okay, what's the particle's final position? So to find the particle's displacement over our interval, we go from 0 to 6 of our function. Okay, I take my integral. Okay, and when I go through and I evaluate that, you get a hundred and eight meters. 108, not 118 by now. Go with the program. Okay, I'm not going to go through evaluating integrals. You guys know to plug in six and plug in zero. So now, so that's the first part. If I have an initial position of seven, what is the particle's final position? So I take my initial position, I add to it the ground that I've covered, my displacement, to get 115 meters. Now for when our velocity, now when I'm trying to find the total distance traveled by the particle. What you have to do is you have to take your integral from 0 to 6 of the absolute value of 3t squared minus 30t plus 72 dt. Now what you have to do when you have an absolute value, you have to break it up into the different points where you're positive or negative. So what you have to do is you have to look and see when that function was zero. That's why part A was so helpful to us. So I break it up from zero to four of three T squared minus 30 T plus 72 DT. And you're gonna find that value and eventually take the absolute value of that we're going to add to that the integral from 4 to 6 of that same function. And again, taking the absolute value of that. Okay, so what's kind of nice is when we take our integral, we have... The same integral that we came up with last time. So now it's just a matter of plugging in the numbers. And finding what these actual values are, and then taking the absolute value of them. So plugging in the 4 and plugging in the 0, we get 112. And I'm going to take the absolute value of that, which is 112, so I didn't really have to worry about that. Plus, now I'm taking the integral, and when I plug in 6, we get 108 minus 112, taking the absolute value of that, adding the two numbers together. We win a total of 116 meters. Okay. Second example, where we're looking now at a graph. So a particle moves along the x-axis, units and centimeters, and shows our initial position at t equals 0 is 15. So that's going to be key to us. Make sure you're reading through the whole problem. The figure shows a graph of the particle's velocity. So this is a graph of v. And the numbers are areas of the region. What's the particle's displacement between t equals 0 and t equals c? So our displacement now, we are going to take, and we're going to basically add those areas together. So 14 minus 7 plus 10, that's going to be 17 centimeters. Now if it's looking for 
final position, what we're going to do is we're going to take and add the 15 plus the 17 and get 32 centimeters. So that's our final position. But this is just its displacement. What is the total distance traveled? So you have to take the absolute value of all of those. So 14 plus 7 plus 10. And we get a total of 31 centimeters. OK, number three. Graph um, shows the velocity of a particle moving along the x-axis is shown. Particle starts at x equals 3 when t equals 0. Find where the particle is at the end of the trip and the total distance. So I need my velocity. So let's find the area of each one of these. This first one's a triangle. So we have 1 half base times height. My base is 2. So 1 half times 2 is 1 times my height is 4. This is 1 half base times height again. So I have 1, 2, 3 for my base, but 4 for my height. So this area is 6. If we have a trapezoid in here, this area is going to be a negative 16. So at the end of the trip, initial plus our displacement. Okay, so our initial position is 3. Initial position was 3. We add to that the area under our curve, so that's 4 minus 16 plus 6. So that is a negative 3. And I have units that give me units, meters. Now the total distance traveled. The total distance that I've traveled is 4 plus the absolute value of 16 plus 6, which is going to get us 26 meters. Okay, our next one. Data from an independent research company found that annual cost per worker for insurance was increasing according to this function. Where f of x is the cost in dollars, at time t and x is the number of years measured from the beginning of 2000. 2000. So x equals 0 is 2000. Find the total increase of cost during the next five years beginning in 2000. So this is, so this is the amount that we're increasing by. So to find the total cost, this is the rate that we're increasing by. So if I'm given a rate, I want to get back down to cost. We take the integral from 0 to 5 of 64.16e to the 0.32x dx, so setting up that integral. Now, I just plugged this in my calculator. So I just plugged this integral in my calculator, and I got 792.58. And this is how the college board and how I'm going to be testing you guys on do you understand what the integral means, okay? If I'm giving you guys a rate, it's increasing at this rate. How do I figure out what the actual cost is? That's what this is. Okay, our next example. We've actually done ones very similar to like this already. So I'm going to go through this one pretty quick. But our machine fills milk cartons with milk at a constant rate. So I'm going with a rate over a certain amount of hours. The rate in cases per hour recorded right here during an eight-hour period and are shown in the chart below. Use the trapezoidal rule. So if they give you a chart of values, they're going to tell you which rule they want you to use, either trapezoidal or one of our Riemann sums, with n equals 8 to determine how many cases of milk were filled by the machine. So we have an eight hour period here. So our time is our x, or that's our base. And this is our function values at each one of those times. 
I apologize, that's not our base, this is our heights. These are the heights. And these are the bases of our trapezoid. Luckily, our time is in equal intervals, so we can use our shortcut. So we have one half, okay? Remember, it's our height is one, so I don't have to multiply by anything. The height is one. Base one plus base two, okay? So I have 118 plus 118, but this 118 doubles in a base for the next trapezoid. So all of these middle values, all of these middle values double as values. So I have 118 plus 112 plus 116 plus 122 and so on. Make sure you guys realize that's a 1. And then our last value is 115. Okay. So now all you have to do is add all those values together. And when I plug this in my calculator, I get 932.5 cases. Okay. A lot of that should have been review. Um, please make sure your lesson summary is submitted on time.